Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG for short is the most commonly used solution to generate answers using LLM from unseen data. We retrieve chunks of data relevant to user query from unseen data and then give it as context to LLM to generate answers to query about that unseen data. To retrieve relevant chunks of data, we store embeddings of those chunks in special kind of DB known as vector databases. Whenever we want relevant docs, we search for docs in a vector database whose embeddings match with query embeddings. And those documents are used as context in RAG apps. Currently, many vector stores are available in the market that let us store and search embeddings. In this video, I will cover a complete guide on one such vector database named Chroma. Chroma is an AI native open source vector database. Chroma gives you the tools to generate embeddings of documents and queries, store embeddings of docs as well as their metadata, and search for matching embeddings. I will cover a complete guide on Chroma's Python client in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started with the coding part. Alright, so I have kept the total code for this tutorial in this Jupyter Notebook. And I will include a link to it into the description so you can download and follow along. At the beginning of the notebook, I have highlighted the important sections of this tutorial. So first of all, I will explain you how to create a client which we will use to interact with the Chroma Vector Store. Then we will create a collection. So collection is where the list of documents, their embeddings and their metadata, if any, will be stored. And then I will explain how you can add documents to the collection how you can search vector store or how you can query collection how you can update records delete records in that collection how you can manage those collections multiple collections how you can create a persistent vector store which will save data to disk so initially we will we'll work with in memory vector store till section 7 and then from section 8 onwards we will work with a collection or persistent vector store persistent collection then I will explain you how you can use the custom embedding functions, your personal embedding function or custom. And in the last section, I will explain you how you can use this Chroma database in a client server mode. So these are the list of topics that I will be covering in this tutorial. So first of all, you need to install a Chroma DB. For that, you can simply execute command pip install Chroma DB in the shell, and that should install the Chroma DB Python library and then in this cell i am importing chroma db so once you have installed it you can simply import it and print a version so i am using this version 0.5.4 for this tutorial so this is the latest version at the time of creating this tutorial so in the first section i am explaining how to create a client so client is the first point of contact to talk to the chroma vector store so the process of creating client is a very simple you simply need to create an instance of client from chroma db client class and that will be the chroma client now this client will be used to create in memory vector store or in memory collection and later on we will create a different client persistent client that will be used to create a persistent vector store so once you have created a client the next thing that we will do is to create a collection so collection is where the documents their embeddings and any metadata will be stored and in one vector store you can create uh, multiple collections so if you have a clusters of document then you can create a one collection for each cluster so if you want to keep relevant documents together in one collection and then another relevant documents in another collection then you can do that so you can create a multiple collections and that multiple collections might be used by different applications or same application so for the process of creating a collection is very simple you simply call this method create collection on chroma client the client object that we created and over there you provide the name of the collection and metadata about that collection metadata is optional but you can provide a dictionary over there and list of key value pairs if you want to maintain some metadata about collections uh, because you can maintain metadata and i would recommend to maintain metadata because there can be multiple collections 
and the metadata can help you differentiate between temps so you can store some metadata about collection through this metadata attribute which should be dictionary key value pairs so the name of the first collection uh, is first collection first underscore collection and then i have given title saying that random documents and description is this store contains the embeddings of random strings so that's our collection now this uh, create collection method has two important other parameters and one of that is a getter create so this will be useful when we create a persistent data persistent collection so if this parameter so by default this parameter is set to false but if it if you set it to true for persistent collection that this create collection method will re will return an existing collection if there is one existing if there is not any one of them existing by that name then it will return a new collection so for this case uh, th this is the in memory vector store or in memory collection we have created and if you restart the notebook this collection will be gone but this parameter will be useful when we create a persistent collection and that i will explain later on the second important parameter is embedding function so by default the collection uses an internal function to create embeddings of the document but if you want to provide your custom embedding function then you can do that using embedding function and i will go into this parameter embedding function in details later on so once you have created a collection you can retrieve its metadata and name to metadata and name attribute and there is a modify method on collection which you can use to change the name and metadata of that particular collection so i have modified the name to in memory store and the description i have modified a bit as you can see that details are updated so once we have created collection the next step will be to add documents to it so for that uh, i have defined a variable docs where there are list of strings so for this example uh, for this tutorial i have kept the example simple and i have kept only these five strings which we will consider as a list of docs and that we will add to our collection so to collection method to collection object we call this method dot add on it to add documents and over there as uh, there is a parameter documents where you can provide list of strings so this list of strings are the documents and then there is ids parameter so you need to provide a list of unique ids for each document in order to identify each document uniquely and then there is a metadata parameter so this one is optional if you want to provide metadata then you can otherwise you can ignore it but i have included it for this tutorial because we will need it to explain few concepts later on and metadata will be one dictionary for one document so that dictionary has a key value pairs you can include as much metadata as you want to include and i have included a simple metadata only one key value pairs and i have included versions so versions 3.5 version 1.5 and so on so that's the metadata now this add method so that's how you can add uh, documents and in this add method has other parameters as well important parameters so one such parameters is embeddings so for our case we added list of strings to this uh, collection and uh, so when uh, as i said when we add documents uh, we add the embeddings of those documents into the vector store into our collection but uh, by we did not provide any embeddings so when we don't provide any embeddings the collection method will use this uh, default embedding function so there is a llm all mini lm this version 2 and that llm is available from a sentence transformer so this llm will be used by chroma db to create embeddings of the strings and then those embeddings will be stored in the collection but there is embeddings parameter so if you have some other llm and you are generating embeddings yourself then you can provide those embeddings through this parameter embeddings so you can provide embeddings then you can provide the original documents as well and metadata and so on and there is also options to provide images and uris so if you are storing documents and you want to provide their paths then you can provide that through uris so once you add collection uh, once you add documents to the collection 
you can check the list of documents available in the collection through this uh, count method and as you can see we added five documents five strings so there is a count of five and in order to retrieve few of the documents you can use this method get and that method accepts uh, parameter ids and there you can provide the ids of the documents so i have provided ids for uh, two documents anthropic and open ai and it retrieved a dictionary where the information about two are present so it retrieved their metadata as you can see and these are the two documents anthropic and open ai that are retrieved and there is a parameter so there is a key included as you can see and it's saying that uh, the response includes metadata and documents so metadata and documents included but embeddings is set to none so if you are interested in including embeddings then there is a parameter name include which you can set in call to get method so when you call collection.get you can provide ids and then you can set include parameter so this time i have set it to embeddings and documents so i omitted metadata so as you can see in the response again that's a dictionary and there are embeddings present over here and if i go at the end as you can see metadata is none because i did not ask for metadata but documents are present so it's up to you which parameters you want and the, then i am printing so what is the length of the embeddings so as you can see the length of the individual embedding is 384 so this llm mini lm l6 version 6 so when the string is given to it it generates embedding of length 384 that particular string and later on i will explain you how to try other llms which will have a different length of the embeddings and then there is another method peak which you can use to retrieve the first few documents of the collection so you can consider it's like uh, you know pandas data frames head method so if you want to peek through first few records then you can do through that using this method so i am retrieving first three documents which are entropic google and meta in our case their embeddings are written and their metadata and documents so everything is written using this method pick so now that we have created a collection and we added a list of documents to it the next step will be to search through documents through in that uh, collection so in this section we will query our vector store so first of all we will search for uh, relevant documents based on a query so for that uh, you can use this method collection and dot query so dot query method is available through collection and then there is a parameter named query text so there you can provide a list of strings so list of queries now for this example i have considered only one query but over here you can provide multiple queries as well and then there is a parameter name and results so how many documents you want that match this particular query and that result returned by this method is again a dictionary so majority of the methods from uh, collection methods return dictionaries so here is the response as you can see from the collection.query so i have asked which is the latest ai model from anthropic and it returned these three documents because we asked first one is cloud 3.5 is the latest from ai so that's the correct one then the mixtral and llama are optional but the first one is correct in this case so it returned three documents it didn't return embeddings because we didn't ask for it and it returned metadata as well and other than that it included one other important parameter which is distances <clears throat> so what is the distance of uh, document from the query and as you can see this uh, first document lot 3.1 3.5 has the least distance and then other two has pretty high distance from our query and by default the metric used to calculate the distance is l2 metric l2 norm or euclidean distance so the euclidean distance means less means better so if euclidean distance is less it means that uh, that particular document is near to our query so that's why this uh, clot 3.5 document has distance of 0.52 and others has high distance because they are not that related to our input query and in this case though we used query text 
but let's say that you have already created an embedding of this particular query using some other function your custom function and you don't want to pass text so then you can pass this query embeddings parameter and in this query embeddings parameter you can pass the embedding of the query that you generated using your llm and then also this uh, function or this method dot query will work then it will work on the embedding that you provided and return the list of documents which match matches their embedding in this case where we have provided string it will first internally generate the embedding for these strings so list of strings first it will generate embeddings and then for those embeddings it will match so the option is up to you other either you want to use the llm available through collection or you can provide your own and then i have printed the documents so again there is an include parameter available for query method as well and by default that parameter is set to metadata document and distances so as you can see distances documents and metadata these three keys had values earlier and you can change it so i am again calling query and this time i am asking it for embeddings documents and distances so i omitted metadata and then again you can see the response that distances are present documents are present and embeddings are present but there won't be any metadata so that's how you can query the collection so the next section i explain how you can again filter documents using where and where documents close so there's where and where documents close let us filter our documents based on the metadata that we provided so if you want to filter further filter the records then you can do that using this where close and this where close is available in query get and delete these three methods and there is a particular way to use a where clause so over here i have explained one example of it so inside of the query method this time again i have passed the same query single query and end result is set to 3 and the where parameter so where clause will be set to dictionary and dictionary the dictionary will be the key value pair and the key will be the metadata and the value will be again dictionary on what operations uh, or what filtering you want to perform on that particular metadata attribute so if you remember we set various versions in our metadata so when i retrieve the document i again want to filter documents where version is equal to 3.5 so first so what how this query will work is that first it will retrieve the list of documents so three documents that matches this particular query and then it will apply the further filtering on those three documents where the version is 3.5 and as you can see from the result from we are only getting one document this time because from the three only one had a version 3.5 so if you want to filter documents further based on the metadata of the documents then you can do that using this where parameter and there are many different operators available so we use equivalent operator but there is not equivalent greater than less than greater than equal to and less than equal to and you can try it with uh, different types of data so string int float so this will be the data type of values of that uh, particular metadata so that was that's how you can filter documents and over here i have explained one more example so again i am passing the same query but this time i want documents where version is greater than three and as you can see from the response we got uh, two documents this time because two has version greater than three so for cloud 3.5 version 3.5 which is greater than three and gpt 4.0 that's version 4 which is greater than 3 so that's why two documents are returned so that's how you can filter document now there are two other important uh, operators available in this where clause which is in and not in so if you want to include a list of documents so you want to filter documents based on a list of values of a particular metadata then you can use in and not in so in will be used to include and not in will be used to exclude documents 
so again we are using the same query that uh, which is the latest ai model we want n result equal to 3 and the where clause is set to version so version is our uh, metadata's uh, key and the value is uh, dot in and the value of that dictionary is 3 and 4 so first we will get the three documents which matches this query and th from those three documents we will check that uh, which documents has version 3 or 4 we will only include those documents which has version 3 and 4 and as you can see from the response now it returned two documents llama 3 and gpt 4o because llama 3 has version 3 and gpt 4o has version 4 and as you can see the actual anthropic document uh, got excluded because it has version 3.5 so that's how you can use dot in operator in the next cell i have one more example where i will explain how to use not in operator and as you can see from the result again we are using same query and result is set to 3 and the result is only one llama 3 which has version 3 which is not 4 now you might be wondering that uh, uh, it did not include the our original version cloud 3.5 the reason behind that is that uh, that 3.5 is a float and over here we are passing only integer values so that's why it did not include that one as well so next i am explaining the where documents clause so till now i explained the where clause there is another parameter where documents which you can use to filter documents now there is a major difference between the where clause and the where document clause so where clause will be applied so all the condition that you specified using this where parameter so this will be applied after the matching documents are retrieved so first the query embeddings will be created then three results will be retrieved and then on those three results this where condition will be applied so the result after applying this where clause can be less than three so as you can see this time we got only one document for previous we got only three two documents so result can be less than the num can be less documents than what we asked for so we asked for three we got only one or two because the where clause is applied on those three documents but in case of where documents it is first apply it is first applied on all the documents which are present in the collection and then those filter documents will be considered for this query text so first the documents all the documents will be filtered so if there are 10 documents and let's say that uh, where document clause matches 7 then those 7 documents will be considered for matching this query so as you can see when i say collection dot query again we are using the same query i have set n results to 3 and where document has uh, so where document has uh, two operators one is contains and one is not contains and over there you can provide the string for which you want to search so i want to search for this string ai so i want to only include documents where the string ai is present and as you can see from the response we got three documents and all these three documents has ai string present over there and do remember that it's a uh, case sensitive so yeah so here is a one more query where i'm asking what which is the latest ai model from anthropic again same query and n result is set to three but this time i have used not contains query and so i specifically tried to exclude llama from the list so as you can see last time there were three documents lot 3.5 mixtral and llama 3 but i don't want llama in our list of documents so that's why i included this condition not contains set to llama and as you can see from the response we again got three documents unlike where close which would have included only two documents but with where document we got three documents so it again included claude and mixtral but it omitted llama model from meta 
but it included this Gemini is the latest AI model from Google. So it included this document. So that's how you can use a where and where document clause to filter the list of documents. So in this section, I am explaining how you can change the default distance used to find the distance between two embeddings. So when we send query embeddings, the list of matching documents will be retrieved based on whatever the distance metric is set. And as I said earlier that by default L2 norm or uh, the Euclidean distance is used to find distance between the two embeddings or two vectors, two float vectors. But other than that, uh, other than that particular metric, the two other metric are available, which is the inner product, which is this one and the cosine similarity and cosine similarity is used very commonly nowadays. So if you want to use this other metrics, how you can do that? So you can do that using the create collection method. So you need to see set those metric when you are creating a collection itself. And there is a parameter inside of metadata named HNSW colon space and the value of that parameter will be used to define the metric that we can use. By default, this parameter is set to L2, but we can override it to use a cosine metric for checking the, dif uh, checking the distance between the two embeddings. So that's how you can change the default L2 metric and use inner product or cosine similarity metric. Next, I'm explaining how you can add more documents to collection. So it's not that the one you create collection, once you create a collection and add documents to it, you can't add more documents to it. You can easily add more documents. And for that, again, we will use the same method add. <coughs> for there, you can provide the list of documents. So I'm adding only one document to our list of collection. And there is a string command R plus is the latest AI model from Cohere. ID is set to Cohere and metadata is again version 1.5 dictionary. And now if I do collection.count, as you can see, it's a six because we had five documents and we inserted one more document. So now the count is six. And you can also check the Cohere document using this get method. So using add method, you can add as many document as you want even after collection is created. Next, I'm explaining how you can update the doc records. So sometimes you might want to update the existing records. You might want to update their embeddings or metadata. And you can do that using this method update. So over there, you need to provide the ID of the documents you want to update. So you can provide the list of IDs and what document values. So you want to update. So in our case, the value for Anthropic earlier was Claude 3.5 is the latest conversational AI model from Anthropic. And I am replacing that string with Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the latest AI model. So using update matter, you can do that. So once you do that, you can check whether it worked or not using this get method. So I am retrieving the Anthropic uh, Anthropic document and as you can see the document this time is the Claude 3.5 Sonnet instead of only Claude 3.5. Now if you try to update the document which does not exist in our collection using this method then it won't work. As you can see I am trying to update this uh, Microsoft uh, document and uh, Fee 3 is the latest AI model from Microsoft. Now this document uh, does not exist in our collection. So this method will fail with uh, this warning message. But uh, and as you can see, there is a uh, no document by Microsoft ID. But let's say that uh, if the document is not there in the collection and you want to add it and if it is there, then you want to update it, then you can use this method absurd. And over here, as you can see, if I provide the IDs as uh, Microsoft, with this document and metadata. Then if I check the collection dot count, as you can see, the count increased from six to seven and I can retrieve the documents and you can again call this absurd matter if you want to update the record as well. So it has a dual purpose absurd method. And then you can also delete the records from the collection. The deletion process is pretty simple. There is a method named delete. 
over there you can provide the ids of the documents that you want to delete so i am provided only one id for microsoft which we recently added and once i call this particular line as you can see the collection count went from seven to six because microsoft document got deleted and if i try to get microsoft document now as you can see in the response there is no document by that name so it's pretty simple to delete the records all right so the collection that we created till now the single collection was an in-memory vector store but what if you want to create a persistent vector store so the in-memory vector store will be gone if i restart this particular notebook because it's in memory let's say that you want to create a vector store which gets stored to disk and you can reuse it next time so you can do that by creating an instance of a persistent client from chroma db and over there you need to provide the path where that uh, persistent vector store will be stored so i have provided a simple part dot slash conversational ai so this will create a folder named conversational ai in the current directory where i have kept this jupyter notebook and inside of that there will be sql my sqlite db instance where our collections will be stored so once you create an instance of a chroma client you can then create a persistent collection using it and next i am also listing as you can see the conversational ai folder so once you have created an instance of chroma client which is a persistent client you can call this method create collection again on it with name and metadata so i have set the name of the collection to persistent collection and metadata again it's the same so this will create a persistent collection inside of this conversational ai folder there is a sqlite db instance there the persistent collection will be created and if you remember i had explained this parameter get or create which is set to true so inside of create collection when this parameter is set to true if this persistent collection already exists in our database then this method will not try to create it again it will return the existing collection and if it does not exist then it will create the new one so that's the use of this parameter so because we are creating this persistent collection for the first time i am adding the list of documents to it using dot add method and then i'm also printing the counts so our existing collection has uh, five documents so this is the persistent collection now if you want to check that whether this get or create is retrieving the existing collection or not so you can do that by calling this method again and that's what i have done over here so i am calling the create collection method again on chroma client i again provided name persistent collection and the metadata and get and create is set to true so this time this collection one as you can see retrieved the existing collection persistent collection because when i when i call the collection one dot count on it it returned the documents count five if it would have created a new collection then this count will be zero but it retrieved the existing collection that's why the count is five so that's how you can retrieve the existing collection using this get or create parameter set to true there are also other ways to retrieve the existing collection and i will explain it later and so we created a persistent collection using a persistent client object over here as you can see persistent client but you can create a persistent collection using the normal client object as well but over there you need to provide a settings object so as you can see chroma db dot settings instance i can create and over there i can provide the persistent directory where we want to create the persistent directory so i have set it to conversational ai and each persistent parameter needs to be set to true so that will be the client setting and now we can create an instance of client with this setting so in this case this client will be the persistent client so this is the another way of creating a persistent client and now if i call the create collection method on this client with the name persistent collection and with this parameter set get or create to true again it will retrieve the existing collection so i have set it the two variable to collection two and when i'm calling count count method on it it's returning the list of documents five because uh, that many documents are present in this collection persistent collection 
So that's how you can create a persistent vector store, a persistent collection using ChromaDB. So now that we created an in-memory collection, we created a persistent collection. In this section, I will explain you how you can work with a list of collections. So you might have more than one collection in your DB. So how you can retrieve individual one, how you can delete, how you can work with list of collections. So for that, there is a method name get collection. If you want to retrieve, retrieve any existing collection, so we are retrieving our persistent collection using this uh, get collection method. So as I said, this is another way of uh, retrieving collection. And as you can see, when I say collection dot count on it, the count is five because we used the Chroma client and we use the persisted Chroma client, which we created in the previous cell, this one. So when you use this one or the persistent client, this one, this one then you can retrieve the existing collection using the get collection method if you know that the collection by that name exists then you don't need to call this create collection method each time you can simply call this method get collection with the collection name and there is also method name get or create collection so this method is just like this parameter get or create set to true so this method will do if the collection exists then it will retrieve that collection and let's say that the collection does not exist then it will create a new collection so when i call the method with the persistent client it retrieves the existing collection and as you can see when i say collection count it retrieved the existing collection and printed the document count which is five but let's say that i give it another name the collection name which does not exist the persistent collection two there is no collection by that name in our vector store. So if I call this method with that name, it will create a new collection. And if I call count on that collection, the count is zero because it's a newly created collection and there are no documents in it. And if you want to check the list of doc collections available in your vector store, there is a method list collection. As you can see, we have our two collections, persistent collection and persistent collections too. You can also use a count collections method to check the count of collections available. And if you don't want any collection, so the way to delete collection will be delete collection method. Over there, you need to provide the name of the collection. So I am deleting this persistent collection two, which I created earlier. And once I delete it, if I call the list collection, there is only one collection, as you can see, persistent collection, where we have four documents present. So that's how you can work with the list of collection, you, how you can create them, lead them, retrieve existing ones and so on. So till now, we use the default embedding function available through Chroma to create embeddings of our document. But what if you want to use some other embedding function, some other embedding function of your own or the other embedding functions which are available. So if you remember by default, we use this LLM, all mini LM L6 version 2 from sentence transformer for creating the embeddings. So ChromaDB used this LLM by default. And if you see this LLM has a context window of only 256 tokens. So if you have uh, documents which are large, <coughs> then the count of the tokens can be higher than 256. Then this particular model will not give good results because it will omit all the tokens which are present in your documents after 256 tokens so you will need to use some other llm which has high token counts and the embedding lens generated by this llm is 386 which we had verified earlier and if you want to see the other llms available through sentence transformer then you can visit this particular link so there are many different LLMs available over here, as you can see, Distill Roberta and many different. And you can also check what is the length of the particular sequence length. So 768 is the dimension for this empty net, net base. And 384 is the context length. So it's higher than this one. So you can use that for other scenarios. Then there is a Distill Roberta, which has a context window of 512 tokens and it will create an embeddings of length 768 
so there are many different models available from uh, sentence transformer so you can go ahead and try all this monitor other all these other models and for trying that you will need to import this class sentence transformer embedding function which is available in chromadb.utils.embedding functions and then you can create an instance of embedding function sentence transformer and over there you can provide the name of the model so i am using this particular model all distil roberta v1 so if i go to list on sentence transformer website this uh, distil roberta v1 this i am going to use for our tutorial so that's the embedding function i want our collection to use to create embeddings of the documents and query both so that's how you can create an embedding function instance and then there is a method name embed with retries so if you want to create an embedding of documents by yourself for verification purpose then you can call this method you can provide over there the list of documents so i have provided our five documents and as you can see the length of the embedding this time is 768 so yeah that's how you can create an embedding function so once we have created an embedding function we can pass it inside of the create collection method so again i have created a persistent client and then again i am calling a create collection method and i am creating a new collection persistent collection distill robert at this time so this is a new collection and i am providing the embedding function to be the distill robert embedding function which we created over here so this particular collection will use distill roberta to create embeddings of the documents and query both and again i set getter create to true so then i added the documents so again i have added the five common documents which we are using for our tutorial as you can see collection dot count is five so after executing this particular cell if i print the list collections as you can see we have two collection now persistent collection which uses the all mini lm llm and then there is a persistent collection distill roberta and this one uses distill roberta llm for creating embeddings and we can also verify the length of the embeddings so i am calling the get method on our collection with two id center we can open ai to retrieve the two documents and i am asking it to include embeddings as well in the result and then if i che check the length of the embeddings as you can see this time the embedding length is 768 and earlier it was 384 for mini lm but for distill roberta the length of the embeddings is 768 so that's how you can use the different llms available through sentence transformers now it's not that only sentence transformer provides the embedding llms there are many different providers of embedding llms like open ai also provides an embedding llm so open ai embedding function class is available inside of this embedding function so chromadb.utils you can import open ai embedding function and then you can use that uh, particular class to create an embedding function so apart from sentence transformer we have open ai embedding so you can use llms from there to create embeddings there is also olama embedding function there is also google palm there is a cohere embedding and there is a sentence transformer and there are a few others providers so there are many different options available to use different embedding functions if you are not comfortable using the default embedding function that the chroma db provides so you can try different embedding functions and i have listed what are the available classes for creating those embedding functions so feel free free to explore that as well all right so in this section i explain how you can use chroma db in a client server mode so till now we use chroma db on only single computer which is my computer so the chroma server is running on my computer and we are accessing using the client which is present on my computer but let's say that you want to deploy chroma db on some cloud instance for example amazon aws or azure instance or some google cloud instance and you want to access the chroma db deployed over their instance from some other computer or client which is outside of that network 
so how you can do that so in order to do that you will need to use chroma db in a client server mode so first of all wherever you want to deploy the chroma db first of all you will have to install the chroma db library over there and then also you will have to create an persistent instance over there as i explained in earlier section you will have to create a persistent client and persistent vector store over there and you will have also have to create a persistent collection over there so for once you have done that then you can execute this command chroma run dash dash path and then the db path and this command will bring up the chroma server so this command needs to be executed on the server so for explanation purpose i will try to run the server on my computer only and will try to access it from my computer only so for that to start the server you need to create you need to go to the shell and over there you need to execute the command which i said chroma run dash dash path and then the path to the db so if you remember in our tutorial we created a folder named conversational ai where we have our chroma db kept and all the persistent collection so i will give the path to that particular folder now in current directory so i am currently in the home directory of my computer so in that directory i have a folder name youtube tutorials so youtube tutorials inside of that there is a folder named chroma vector store and inside of that this uh, conversational ai folder is available so i need to give that uh, full path after dash dash path uh, attribute so once i execute this and as you can see it uh, brought up the server so the chroma server as you can see it's running at this uh, http localhost and the port is 8000 the server is up and running now we can access this server so let's say that you run this server on some aws instance and so on and you want to access it from outside computers how you can do that so for that now you need to create an http client so if you remember earlier we created only instance of client and persistent client but to interact in a client server mode you will need to create an instance of http client and over there you can provide the host name so in my case it's a local host but if you are using aws instance or a google cloud instance then you can provide the dns of that particular instance or you can provide the ip address and then you can provide the port from whichever port the client is available the chroma db server is available you can set ssl to false or true and if you want to provide some headers some http headers in that particular request all the requests then you can provide that to headers parameter <coughs> now when you set this uh, chroma server on the particular amazon aws instance you will have to also change the firewall settings you will have to allow the outside traffic on port 800 8000 so do remember to change firewall settings otherwise you won't be able to access the chroma client from outside so once you create this chroma client then we can retrieve the existing collection so i am trying to retrieve the existing collection persistent collection which we created and as you can see the collection.count returned five because we had inserted five documents in it then also we can try to retrieve the documents i am calling collection.get and i am retrieving two documents anthropic and open ai i am retrieving their embeddings and the documents and as you can see when i printed the embeddings length from the result its length is 384 so that's the default llm used so it was able to retrieve the retrieve the documents and next i am trying to retrieve the another collection so we created a persistent collection distal roberta so this was our second uh, persistent collection if you remember and again i am checking the count so in that one also we inserted our five documents so that's why count is five and same way we can retrieve the documents so i am again retrieving entropic and open air documents from it and from the result if i print the length of the embeddings this time as you can see the length of the embedding is 768 so the collection dot get method work correctly because in distill roberta collection we use the all distill roberta llm to create the embeddings of the document that's why the length is higher 
all right so that concludes our tutorial on chroma vector store i tried to cover as many topics as possible if you have any doubts or any questions then please feel free to let me know in the comment section and see you next time